broken this series up into five separate videos so that way we can really focus on each individual cause of death as a as a whole so you can fully understand that and today we're going to be talking about arrhythmias and in the following weeks or the coming weeks we're going to be talking about things like aortic dissections we're going to be talking about cerebral accidents or cerebral events we're going to be talking about pulmonary embolisms massive pulmonary embolisms that can cause almost sudden death and of course we're going to talk about myocardial infarctions all through are all in uh, can cause unexpected death in these patients that we're going to be dealing with on a regular basis so that's what we're going to be dealing with and today we're going to start out with arrhythmias now cardiac arrhythmias are something that we need to be looking out for there this is a big reason why we need to understand ecgs apart from just knowing what s t elevation is and knowing how these arrhythmias can turn into a sudden catastrophic event that can cause death in our patients and the one in particular one that we need to be concerned about is prolonging qt intervals and prolonging qt intervals can be a very key indicator of something very serious about to happen there's a few things that can cause it which we're going to talk about a little bit further in here uh, but the one thing that we're going to be looking out for here is that the chances of a qtc can turn into a polymorphic VTAC or Toussaint's to Pont. And so that's something that we need to be concerned about. So let's talk about the QTC and what we need to be looking out for here when we do an ECG to confirm that we're not walking ourselves into a bad situation or maybe even leaving someone at home because we feel that there's nothing that's suggesting that we need to actually transport them. Or maybe the patient refuses and we're not seeing the subtle hints that suggest that we need to be transporting this patient because they're at a high risk of a sudden death because of a prolonged QTC. Let's check it out. So a normal QT is actually gonna be under 440 milliseconds. 440 milliseconds. Just to give you kind of a reference point of what that means, okay? Normal is 440 milliseconds, okay? So as far as the 440 milliseconds, to give that a reference point of how far that is when it comes to an actual ECG here, each individual small box, okay? A small box here is 40 milliseconds and then a large box here I'll just change the color so you can kind of see it a little bit better here a large box is going to be 200 milliseconds and that's what we're going to be looking for so in other words basically what we're looking for uh, to consider a normal QT is going to be two large boxes so a normal QTC should be two large boxes plus one small box okay that's a normally normal key to QT interval or QTC. So let's look at it and just put this in perspective here. So we have this P wave that actually is starting on that large box. But what we're going to do in order to measure a normal QT is actually look for the Q wave. And the Q wave starts right about there. Okay, right there just before this small box. And then we're going to measure the distance between that and the end of the T wave. Okay, the end of the T wave once it goes back to the isoelectric line. And so from this, in this particular case, we have one large box, which is 200 milliseconds, plus one, two, three, uh, about four uh, small boxes. So that's, uh, you know, about 200, okay, 200 plus just under 400 milliseconds, okay, 300 and 80 milliseconds, which is under our threshold. So that's what we do in our identify a normal QT interval is measure out and make sure that it's under 440 milliseconds. And in this particular QT, we are under that threshold. So this is a normal QT. And so let's look at a prolonged QT here. Now this might be a little bit more difficult for you to see. I had to blow it up so you can see it a little bit here. But when we're actually, again, we're looking at this normal QT interval. And so we have to look at the Q wave uh, right there at the beginning of the R or QRS itself and the end of the T wave. Okay, the end of the T wave goes there. Now, just to give you a reference point, this is a large box, another large box, another large box. Okay, and so in this particular case, we have three large boxes in between the start of the Q wave and the end of the T wave before it gets to the isoelectric line. So that means that this one in particular is almost, or it's actually 600 
milliseconds, 600 milliseconds, which is definitely a prolonged QT interval. And why is this dangerous? Why is it important to understand QT intervals? Well, the longer the QT gets, the more likely this patient can go into a cardiac arrhythmia. And what causes those kind of things? Well, things like Brugada's, okay? Brugada syndrome is something that can cause that. Uh, congenital, okay, congenital. Congenital uh, causes can definitely cause prolonged QTCs. Things like acute MI or previous. MIs. Okay, is something that can cause these as well. And then one of the biggest ones that we're going to see is electrolytes. Okay, is electrolytes. And electrolytes can be a big reason why we see these prolonged QTCs. And so that's something that we really have to be looking out for here. So there's a lot of causes that we need to be concerned about because the longer, like I said, the longer that QTC is or that prolonged QT is, the more likely we can see cardiac arrhythmias like polymorphic VTAC or torsades to point. And that's a big thing that we need to be watching out for when we're dealing with these patients. And so when you have a patient that has kind of um, general malaise and weakness, confusion, things that kind of kind of lead you in the direction of maybe an electrolyte abnormality, take a look at the QTC. And the QTC might give you an indication that there's something that you need to deal with or attend to because again, the chances of them going into something like this are quite high, causing a sudden, sudden cardiac arrest. And so when it comes to to these treatments itself it really depends on the cause because when it comes to the treatment all these sudden cardiac arrests can occur for different reasons and so the answer is what should we do when we see this prolonged QTC or worse a polymorphic VTAC that we are suggesting it could be some sort of electrolyte or previous MI problem well we need to treat the cause is really the answer to this so depending on if it's an electrolyte abnormality or if it's an acute MI or if it's Brugada those are the kind of things that we need to look for in order to find out the best course of action to treat this polymorphic VTAC if they go into cardiac arrest or hopefully when we see that prolonged QTC we investigate further with our patients to identify the reason and try and treat that reason so that way we can start to normalize that QTC if possible. So that's essentially what we're going to be looking for, especially in electrolyte abnormalities. It's a very big reason why we're going to see these types of patients go into polymorphic VTAC. So that is our first uh, sudden cardiac arrest cause when it comes to this particular article. So if you're interested in reading this article and reading about the next four causes and getting ahead of these videos, please feel free to do so. Uh, but we'll be releasing videos every week talking about this particular article here on the GEMS magazine. It's one of the most popular articles on the GEMS magazine. And we're going to be doing videos of these to break down the reasoning behind all of these particular emergencies that we need to be aware of so we can treat them appropriately. We'll see you next time.